Hey guys, what's up? This is Catch22, aka the Sagaholic, and I bought this Astro City um, arcade panel about two weeks ago. But when it came in, the box had this big dent, uh, which I was not too crazy about when I saw it. Anyway, here's the panel. Um, you can see this is a dedicated Virtual Fighter panel, um, and this is an original one. If it's not original, it's going to say licensed by Sega. And this one has a dent here, which is not in the picture, it's on the eBay listing. So I'm going to have to remove this dent. This was insured, and I tried to claim it from the post office, but they denied my claim for whatever reason, which I'm kind of unhappy about, and which is kind of unbelievable to me. And there's quite a bit of rust underneath. So I'm gonna have to remove some of this rust. Okay, so I put some tape on the overlay to protect it. And I've already used the file there to file the dent down. The dent is right there. And I'm gonna use this abrasive um, thingy here, along with an electric drill you can use battery uh, operated drill if you want to also make sure to use a respirator and eyewear because you don't want to breathe in all the uh, rust and obviously you don't want the rust to get in your eyes uh, this extra capacity battery actually lasted throughout the whole job and right now since this is bare metal um, we're gonna have to coat this with uh, some machine oil or you can clean the dust off and put some sort of a clear coat on it otherwise it's just gonna start um, oxidizing and rusting again. You can see here the rust actually started to pit the metal. Um, this is the best I can do. So get some of these uh, abrasive um, pads here for your drill and it'll make the job a lot easier than sanding. Okay here's the panel all cleaned off and coated. I coated mine with Vaseline but you can coat yours with uh, machine oil. And here's the top side cleaned off. Before we continue with the build, here's some of my past history in joystick making. This is a box of Sanwa parts that I got way back in uh, November of 2002. I used to build sticks for the Virtual Fighter community and was the first to use Sanwa parts in homemade sticks. Being a huge Virtual Fighter fan and watching tournament clips from Sega Japan's Amusement Division website as well as tourney videos and also hearing how inferior Hori sticks were to the arcade version, I knew I wanted to use actual arcade parts from the Japanese cabinets. Importing a whole candy cab was out of the question for monetary reasons, so I decided to make my own sticks. I just needed to find out who made the parts. Luckily, Sanwa's website had the V4 set, which is just a plain JLF stick with a harness. A Google search picked up on the Virtual Fighter 4 set and after days of research, I learned who manufactured the sticks and buttons used for the cabs in the videos. Sanwa's web store was Japanese only, but I filled out the order form regardless with the help of translators and incredibly got a reply a few weeks later. These parts are the leftovers I had from mid-2002 to late-2002. I didn't even know what to call this octagonal gate back then, but now I prefer the square gate anyway. Also, I didn't even know why the JLF sticks came with two dust covers, that's why I have all these leftovers, but you'll see why later on. Here's more buttons, some hole covers, more buttons here, 30 millimeter. And um, this is a project box that I used to put the electronics in for the custom sticks. And here's the uh, VF4 set that I mentioned earlier, which is again just a JLF stick with the uh, Vermilion all. Here's some extra 24 millimeter start buttons, some extra colored buttons in 30 millimeter and also some extra balls in different colors. 
Here's a copy of the email on my first Mac, an iMac 500 SE. You can see the email is in AOL format. And it's dated November 14, 2002, and a via set was $20. This ended up being the last order direct from Sanwa, and came out to be over $200. And with that, my first stick was made. I was still going to electronic school at the time, so I couldn't afford power tools. So I just bought some quarter rounds and some pre-cut wood from Home Depot and came up with this. After posting pics on the VFDC forums, some forum members made requests and they were sent all over the world. The stick bases started from simple short box shapes to more elaborate taller angular shapes. Requests and questions were pouring in on a daily basis, so I encouraged gamers to make their own and even created a website called the Joystick Builder to show them how. The Joystick Builder launched on November 3, 2002 and was at the time the only stick making resource on the web. I uploaded the site to Angel Fire after years of being down, and now you can find it at this URL. I updated my original stick to this just a few months after completing it. You can see the damage to the paint and underlay artwork as someone used it as a coaster. Lots of support wood was used to keep the Lexan plexiglass from flexing and feeling hollow when the buttons were pressed. Some design ideas I originated back then, like the use of DB connectors, are still being used today. During this time, an epiphany came to mind. Why not use solid parts on retail sticks? This Namco stick was the first retail stick to be modified with arcade parts. The client bought his sticks to EVO of 2003 and my sticks gained even more publicity. It was said that my heroes, the Japanese players there, thought highly of it. Even other video game communities, including Tekken, took notice. Here's more verification during EVO 2003. By the time summer of 2003 came, I was burnt out from school. It was the last trimester and finals and graduation was coming. Because of the exposure from EVO, gamers were coming to learn the Sanwa name, and I was getting flooded with requests I could not fulfill, especially since the Japanese Sanwa rep was no longer responding to my emails. Most gamers just wanted the Sanwa parts to play with. By the end of 2003, I stopped making sticks altogether. The new job made making sticks impossible. I even stepped away from video games for a handful of years. Soon after, other better stick builders happily took the mantle and progressed stick building to a higher level. But even years later, incredibly I was still getting requests. It took until February of 2007 for Sega to offer the first mass market arcade stick that used Sanwa parts with the Virtua Stick High Grade. With this, Sanwa became the standard for sticks and buttons used in home arcade sticks. And the rest, as they say, is history. These are some used sticks taken from old panels. The first one is a Sametsu LS33, but we're gonna be using the Sanwa JLF sticks instead. You can see the green one has cosmetic damage on the shaft that can easily be covered with a sleeve like the one on the pink stick. Sanwa sells replacement parts for the entire stick separately, so it can easily replace worn parts, instead of spending more to buy a complete assembly. In this case, we are going to disassemble, clean, and lubricate. Use a slotted screwdriver to hold the shaft in place while turning the ball top counterclockwise to remove. The shaft and dust cover can also now be removed.
use a pointy tool to slowly remove the e-clip from the bottom of the shaft. Otherwise, the clip can go flying off and be lost. Now we can press in the four tabs to remove the gate. With the gate off, the micro switch PCB can be removed. This, along with the body, as well as the pivot joint, needs to be cleaned of the lubricant. Once the parts are cleaned, use Shinetsu silicone grease recommended by Sanwa to re-grease these parts. Try not to use any other lubricant as they may be harmful to plastics. You can find a tube for cheap on eBay. You can now reverse the steps for reassembly. The sleeve is tapered, so make sure you put it the right way. To give the ball some luster, polish it with this turtle wax scratch remover, which you can get at Walmart for about $3. This is a Sametsu short button on the left, while the right button is a regular Sanwa OBSF30. You can identify brands by the differences in their button switches. To disassemble, press in the tabs on either side of the body to remove the plunger. Press the tabs on the switch to remove. Again, use turtle wax scratch remover to bring back the button's luster. After cleaning the buttons of finger crud and polishing them, I can now install the parts on the panel. Except for the short Semetsu button, all the other buttons are Sanwa OBSF30. All of these are used and come from old panels. For Sanwa sticks, two dust covers are used, one above and one below the panel. Also, the eBay listing erroneously states that the panel does not take Sanwa sticks. Old panels with this mount will fit Sametsu sticks with this plate, and Sanwa sticks with the plate removed.
This is the stock screw used to mount the sticks to the panel. If you are missing these screws, you will need M4.70 by 12 pan head Phillips machine screws, along with 4mm locking and flat washers. Here's a side by side of the original and the replacement. This is a close up of the original screw head. The dot signifies this is a JIS screw. A regular Phillips driver will not fit the head properly and tear it up. Make sure you use a JIS compatible driver. These are the nuts and bolts used to hold on the panel. The old original ones have bigger heads compared to the new replacement parts that you can get from Sanwa. The nut size is 7mm so you will need a 7mm wrench. Well folks, that's it for now. Part 2 should be out shortly, which will focus on the base. And then uh, part 3, which will focus on the electronics, should follow shortly after that. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys next time. Aloha.